The fifth song is the title track on the album, and it's a long one, so I'll probably split it over two or three different videos. It starts off with me once again floating in the white light, and it's a very strange experience. And I spoke earlier about how dreams seem to happen outside of time and space. The dreams of white light seem to happen outside of thoughts as well. It's as if you're shut off from your subconscious mind and you're floating in a place of pure awareness, free of the clutter and background noise of your thoughts and free of the imagery, the world and people and events that those thoughts usually create in a normal dream. But as the song says, the beginning is also the end and first the dreamer must chase his steps back. So I'll talk more about the white light when it returns at the end of this song, but for now, we'll find out how I got there in the first place. This beginning is the end You must trace your steps back Remember This song is about my mission to defeat the second entity, this demon that had returned to the cupboard of my dreams. And at this point, several years had passed since I moved from the house where I grew up, and the way that my life had unfolded, I found myself once again living with my older brother. And as well as drinking lots of alcohol and watching lots of science fiction, we also spoke endlessly about dreams, as we did when we were kids. And now and again, I'd find myself in the room in the house where I grew up, and the entity was still there in the cupboard, and it was still just as terrifying as it had always been. So, after discussing this with my brother, we realised that whatever fear was manifesting itself as the entity was still there in my subconscious mind. I manifest myself in many more. Because these negative thoughts and irrational fears that make us act the way that we do, they're always there in the back of our mind, affecting our behaviour. But in dreams, they're a lot easier to notice because they're out in the open. And in lucid dreams, of course, we can choose to confront them. And I knew then that I would have to confront this demon and find out what fear it actually represented. Something that I hadn't looked into much at that point was a thing called dream signs, which are just as important as reality tests when it comes to achieving lucidity. Dream signs are basically things that can only happen when you're dreaming. And by making a point of noting these down and putting some thought to them and discussing them, you can learn to recognise them and use them as triggers for lucid dreams. Looking back, I realised that my first ever lucid dream was achieved using this method. The dream sign back then was obviously the monster in the cupboard at the foot of the stairs. And discussing this with my brother and making a point of remembering and, and planning what I'd do next time I encountered it allowed me to control my dreams for the first time. So it's a very effective method. And dream signs can be as obvious as that monster, or they can be very subtle. So as always, discipline is required in order to make the best use of this technique. And the next part of this song is an account of all the dream signs that I used to become lucid in order to carry out my demon hunting mission. The story starts off with me waking up in bed as a child and I run through into my mother's room and as I'm giving her a hug I realise that something's not quite right and I look up and see that her eyes are cold and lifeless so I run out of the house terrified and get into my car. Now already I've missed some obvious dream signs Finding yourself in a house where you no longer live, people acting out of character, and me going from being a child to being an adult in the space of seconds are all obvious dream signs. I then race off in the car and I realise there's a boy sitting next to me and he needs protection. We stop at the traffic lights and I see there's a man outside, so I get out to chase him, but he disappears. I then sit back down and... I'm now sitting on a wooden chair. Such an obvious dream sign, but I miss it. And instead, I'm trying to work out why it won't drive anymore. The boy is now missing, 
and I'm desperately trying to shuffle this wooden chair along the road to find him. I see a matchbox lying on the ground. I pick it up, look inside, and he's in there, but he's turned into a tiny little doll. I'm now frantically trying to work out how to change him back into a human being. Again, people and objects changing and acting out of sorts. People acting threateningly towards you and situations spinning drastically out of control are all obvious dream signs. Dream signs tend to be mainly created by negative thoughts. And looking back, I realised that although the fear that was connected with the entity was mainly focused in the bedroom cupboard, it would also manifest itself as other things as well. But it's not true that all dream signs are fear-based. At the beginning of the second verse, there are two classic dream signs which arise from bodily functions in the real world not being met while in the dream. It flows and flows with no relief. <laughs> I wonder who to quench my thirst instead. You drink and drink, but the water's dry. So First one is drinking and drinking and never quenching your thirst. And then there's going to the toilet and peeing and peeing and never getting any relief. No matter how hard you try, you still feel like you need to go. And I did find a way of overcoming this one when I was a child. I would find a toilet in the dream and I would concentrate really hard until I did get relief and then I could, could continue on with the dream. But unfortunately, it would result in me waking up in a bit of a puddle, having wet the bed in the process. So that's one to watch out for. Then again in this verse, there's that need to protect someone, which is a common dream sign for me and is obviously a manifestation of a more positive, nurturing emotion. And in this case, it's a girl who needs my protection from an attacker who is pursuing her. The threat changes as the dream goes on and it starts off as someone chasing us and we're trying to run away but we're struggling to run away. A classic dream sign where you feel like you're running underwater or ankle deep in glue, as a wise man once put it. The pursuer then changes into an entity and then a wave front and finally transforms into a full blown hurricane demon. And it's at this point of no return and out of utter desperation that some of the most glaringly obvious dream signs start to happen. I take off and fly with the girl. I then conjure up balls of light to attack the demon. I then realise I've defeated it, but in the process I've destroyed the entire earth and I'm floating in space, looking down at the pieces. And I still don't realise that I'm dreaming. And this is why it's so important to look for dream signs, to learn to recognise them and make a point of remembering them because you get so caught up in the dream that you end up missing them. So it's only when I turn around to check on the girl and I see that it's actually a friend who's passed away. Then I become lucid. The dream fades and I find myself standing beside my sleeping body in bed. And I remember my dream goal. So it's now time to get on with my mission. Confronting this second entity. Thanks for watching. When the chat to see if she's okay, I can't